welcome to What's New in Electronics Live 2018 at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, I'm joined by uh, Michael Ford, um, Thomas Mark Scheffel and Naim Kapidia. Um, thanks for talking to us guys. Um, the title of this um, roundtable is Industry 4.0, Trends and Values. Um, I was really intrigued listening to your keynote speech this morning um, that Industry 4.0 is something that is ongoing, it's been happening for a while, it will continue to happen for some time, and it feels like an evolution, although what it brings into the world is revolutionary. But then with CFX, which is going on here now, and the Hermes standard, the, the demonstrations we're seeing, which are, which are very impressive, is that the little revolution that allows everyone to jump up a level of a, you know, is that the thing that brings it into everybody's world from the point of view of electronics manufacturing? So, Michael, do you do you believe that is so? Yeah, I, I really do. Um, the drivers behind Industry 4.0 are not new. I mean, the business needs uh, coming from customers, flexibility, that's been happening for a long time. So the ideas of Industry 4.0 have been developing over time. And different people have different ideas of what it is, but generally there is a consensus formed now. But that's not going to happen in the future. What we're going to see now is a step change. Because what we've been lacking so far are the real tools with which to achieve Industry 4.0 on a scale that ordinary companies can address. So this is not the investment of millions of dollars. This is something that's free and available to link all of the uh, equipment together to get the information out and to start to do something. And it's that word, do something, that is the real kind of catalyst for this really starting to ramp up now. So the tools with CFX and Hermes are here right now. People can start to play with it without investment. And so the imagination is being driven. Do you think that's a key phrase there? People can start to play with it. It is actually something that there's a sandbox everyone can get into and use CFX and Hermes to play and find out things. So, to just from taking from your point, um, naturally, um, people in this world are already adapting to this technology anyway. Um, when you look at things around you, you know, the way the technology is going, things like you know, watches um, like Fitbit, um, you've got the, third, the, the Nest thermostat, and it's becoming more and more intelligent, where it's taking the data, it's understanding your needs, and it's now supporting you. So things like CFX is definitely something that uh, I, I believe that, you know, having that data and having that big data going up and doing something with that data, is, there's definitely a need for the industry. And, and I think this is where we should be at the moment. Thomas, do you think that is, it is an, ena an, en an enabling technology that will bring people in to this sandbox, if you can use that term, and then actually it will grow much more quickly because of that, because it, you, it, it's more welcoming, people can come in, they can see the return straight away, they see the value in it, and it, it allows companies, large or small, to get onto that bandwagon. Yes, I think so. We have already seen a couple of um, Industry 4.0 solutions and they all proved uh, quite fast uh, return on investment. But all of these solutions are more or less um, yeah, customer specific solutions and they are based on a specific implementation. And what we need to do now is take these approaches and make them available for all vendors and for all customers and by doing so I think the key is to apply the same, <coughs> sorry, the same language and the same protocols so that we eliminate this barrier of uh, different languages, different protocols and make the data um, in a cheap way available for everybody so that customers and vendors only need to pay for this new business solutions and that will enable them to get the ROI even faster than today. Yeah. Do you think people have been scared of Industry 4.0 because it, it sounds scary if you're 
you've got an established business and you don't want to have to change it, it's working, it's producing revenue, uh, do you think that CFX then will soften the blow <laughs> for people? Um, yeah, it, it's interesting because in manufacturing, people hate change. You know, they don't want to change anything because any change introduces risk. So if you're going to change something, you need to know exactly what's going to happen. So in the common way of thinking, maybe a customer comes up with a requirement and something has to be set in motion and you're calculating the risk and the cost, where do I get the information from? And the whole thing becomes quite a long convoluted project and it's kind of like islands of uh, solutions, if you like, little solution comes out as a result. With CFX, everything is the other way up. If you've got a factory and all of your equipment is CFX enabled, you've got a wealth of data. And so you didn't need to change anything but you've got the opportunity now to create value that was impossible before. And so you might think, well, I want to provide a higher level of traceability. I want to give my customer visibility. I want to make my factory more flexible. Those options just exist and you can start to work with that. So you're being proactively driven to be prepared for new opportunities as they come up for manufacturers. And does it, by the very nature of what it is being open source and with a SDK that can be developed across the board with, you know, within companies or developers of their own coming on, does that provide the future proofing that businessmen will say, yes, I can, I can go with this, it, it will allow me to carry on doing what I'm doing more efficiently, they can see that return on investment. Yeah. Is this the, the thing that uh, makes that happen? Um, absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. Um, so one of the things we're looking at at the moment um, is the, the, the competence gap. So when these technology evolves, um, and so if I take a step back, um, you know, Industry 4.0, you know, for the last few years, and I think there's been some misconception, misunderstanding of what is Industry 4.0. Um, but in reality, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been historic. You can go back all the way down from Industry 1.0, where things like machines and power and steam water was developed. And then they moved into the Industry 0.20, uh, where things like mass production assembly was carried out. And today we are in the 20th century, or, or 21st century, but 20th century was automated production. We've had electronics and IT used in, in our companies. But with Industry 4.0, it's this cloud technology and big data. It's now sharing that big data and, and then trying to get that, that advanced technology to give us something back. What is it telling us? You know, what can we do with that data so we can make you know, smarter uh, supply chain and so forth? So, so it is a, is, is a big step for everyone, but that's the way forward. And it's interesting when you describe it in those terms, in historical terms, that is this almost a stealth revolution because it's things we don't see, like you say, the cloud, and things we take for granted, the smartwatch, the Fitbit, all those things, which are, is using data, feeding it around, and we're we're absorbing that and using it, but people don't appreciate the leaps behind it. Do you think that's true? Or? Okay, you can call it a stealth revolution. Yes, because so fast we all became uh, used to that, like with our smartphones. Uh, data is available in the cloud. When migrating from one phone to another, I just uh, yeah access my backup data, and on the new phone, I see the same as on my previous phone. I think similar things will be coming to our industry, and with this SDK, my experience with that, what it was so easy. So within a few hours, we had the first things going, and. By having these kind of experiences, I think you just get used to that and you take it for granted because you think, okay, that's how it has to be, how it is, and you do not even think about is there a change or not because it just happened. Um, if it's a technology that you need to take a training course for several weeks or months, yes, you feel the hurdle and you feel a transition. If you just open up a document, you go to a website, you download and put that into your Visual Studio and then half an hour later you have the first code going, you do not, yeah, you do not recognize this as a big change. It was just something there, uh, you link it in and you go ahead. And I think that is uh, what 
we were seeing with CFX with the first steps and what we will be seeing uh, with the SDK for the yeah for the final version that we are currently working on um, you know that's a great point you know because in the past whenever any interface is created between any two <coughs> vendors there are discussions, there are telephone calls, there's NDAs, there's meetings, there's training for engineers, there's testing, there's debugging, there's customer on-site. It's a very, very long process, and to be honest, it's quite painful. But exactly as you described, with CFX, two hours or so with the SDK, you're able to test the data online. Within the whole of the development, or all of the CFX trials that we've done, there have been no business trips, there have been no discussions about how or whether something is working. You simply go on the website and you see the data that's there. It's job done. So you know you can easily forget the pain of the past because what you're doing now is so good. So that's a really good point actually for people and the expectation that that sets going forward. It really is how we describe it. Yeah. Do, do you think that's an issue there that maybe people won't value it enough because they don't see all, the, you know, all of these previous revolutions you've yeah. got written out there there was a big proof of it. Steam engines, big factories, mills, belching smoke, that was industry. Now it's it's on a almost a micro level compared to the, the although you know, the, what it means the industry is yeah. vast. Do you think it's gonna uh, I think those terms? I think it naturally it will um, immerse in people. I mean I think, you know, we had a, a, an earlier chat about, you know, does it just apply to large organisations or small organisation? To be honest, it applies to the individual because individual are being connected. You know, whether it's got, they've got a watch or whether they've got a a smart electric um, distribution board where it tells you that the lights are left on. Um, so already you're already talking to the data. Now, obviously, there is a concern behind that. Um, is security. I mean, I've got a thermostat where you know it tells me that you know if, if someone is in the house or not. If someone's not in the house, then they'll switch it off. So it. it it works out your pattern around you. However, if if someone from outside, I mean that great data is great for me, but from outside and it works out that this guy goes out at work at eight o'clock every day, then there is a risk that you know that I'm bringing in. But cybersecurity would be a, a big thing, you know, coming ahead of us. Does CFX, by its nature, reduce those concerns? Because usually, usually security is the weakest link in a. You know, you've got a set of dumb individual uh, machines or applications that do pass data to each other, then it's down to each manufacturer to make sure they're, they're secure. The one who does the worst job of that is going to be the weak link into it. Right. The CFX, as I understand it, is, is across the board. So it, it takes hopefully takes that fear away. Yeah, um, with CFX right from the start, we realized that the value of that data is very, very serious, you know, the traceability data, or all of that kind of stuff. So for the protocol that we selected as a consensus group, we chose a protocol called AMQP, which is version 1.0. Now, maybe that doesn't mean much to anybody, but actually when you use your mobile phone to do banking transactions, that's using AMQP 1.0. And whenever you send data outside of your company firewall, that data can be encrypted within CFX. So it has very high security built into the actual standard. Which must be a massively important part of that whole system. It would be game over if yeah, you didn't yeah, have that, yeah, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's anything new, whatever it is now, involving data, you know, AI or machine learning, using that data, needs the data to be built up? Do you think that we need early adopters, don't we? You know, we need people to come in and get on this, get it moving, build that data up. Do you think there's benefits to those early adopters or are there problems for those early adopters? I think adopters? the early adopters will be the biggest winners as usual. Um, of course, we will need early adopters because these will be the companies or the, the players who will be driving the standard and who will be driving the applications and they I think will develop all the new ideas because once uh, you start with uh, something like Industry 4.0 you start with one topic you implement it and then suddenly you 
you see the value and you also see where's more value and so you're continuing. If you're only watching and following, you are following on the track that others have already cleared, they have cleared the path and by clearing the path I think they also have reaped the benefits and so I think the early adopters will be driving the standard and they will also they will also have the biggest benefits from that. It's a question uh, between uh, staying on the safe side or taking some risk and taking some risk also means uh, potentially having higher benefit from that. And the whole point of CFX is that they'll see the return on investment pretty immediately, won't they? You know, they can yeah. see the stats are there. Yeah. Right. So at the moment, um, MTC um, uh, want to help you know de-risk some of these issues. So we want to um, have it uh, implemented on our line. You know, so we can bring people from the industry to see, you know, what the challenge is. Sometimes, you know, seeing is believing, and 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 what data they get out of it. So, so we've sort of, come, you know, put it, put, we put our for, self forward to commit some time to this to get the industry to, to help the industry to say, well, how is it going to help a small company or a large company? You come to MTC and we'll demonstrate it, Fantastic. and from there, we'll hopefully, we'll evolve from there. It needs champions, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah Any, anything new. We have done some uh, first products at ASM, for example, the, the process expert. It is uh, one part we could see on, on Michael's presentation about optimizing the printing process and then this uh, feeding forward of placement correction. Yeah. And just by establishing this closed loop, optimizing the printing process, some of our customers were able to reduce the defects by 40%, mm -hmm. So, which is a quick win but it requires this communication. And by using a standard communication like CFX, it is not limited to, let's say, the two machines on which it was developed. It will work on any kind of placement machine and printing machine or SPI and, and printing machine. And I think that's then the next step with the biggest benefit of such a standard like CFX. How far can you see it going up the supply chain? Because we're talking about the the factory, really, aren't we? You know, the live line here. Yeah. It's all it's those, you know, and that that makes perfect sense that these can self-regulate, self-diagnose, and improve and reduce defects and increase revenue. That's what everyone wants. <clears throat> then, intriguingly, on your diagram earlier on, there's that there's that horizontal level. Then it can go up a level and along there. And then, right. how far do you think that tree can keep growing? It's really interesting. Um, CFX is being targeted for not only <coughs> electronics and, and lines and SMT, but also the associated assembly areas as well. So you've basically got end to end, including even circuit boards in the future, we're planning to extend it to. Um, we've had inquiries from semiconductors as well, so almost back to the sand from which components are made out of all the way through to a working product in the house. Um, but also then, if you go up in another dimension, uh, for example, through supply chain, traceability is a critical issue for people right now because of counterfeit materials. Mm -hmm. If you, I mean, you can use CFX to capture the exact traceability of the use of materials so that you can prove beyond any doubt that a particular instance of a found counterfeit is then traced back to a point of responsibility in the supply chain. The next step of that is to extend the supply chain, the security of it, from the point of entry into the factory back through the distributors to the point of manufacture. Very quickly, we could see a situation whereby the whole business model of counterfeit materials is destroyed because they will know that whenever an instance of counterfeit is made, they are going to be tracked back. And there have already been prosecutions in the US, several prosecutions in California already, where this mechanism has been used. So it's really turning the tide on this kind of real issue in the industry. So it's expanding in many different directions. I mean, it's starting to almost sound like the word we very rarely use and actually be a panacea where it actually hmm. comes in and we don't actually know yet how far it can be useful. You know, it, it, can, it seems to be able to carry on giving us relevance and value in areas which you wouldn't have conceived of. 
when it starts. Yeah, I, I think working with MTC is going to be extremely interesting over the next couple of years or so mm -hmm. because we will be exploring together, I mean, as a team of all of the uh, participants here, looking to see how far we can take the generation of value and ideas from all kinds of manufacturing. And if we can focus that in activities yeah. with MTC, mm -hmm. we're really going to have some great success stories going forward because it really is opening people's imagination to what can be done here. So, yeah, so I totally agree in terms of uh, factory of the future is what we call it. Um, so, you know, we want MTC to be the factory of the future so that people can come to look at the innovative things and, and then take away you know, some of the know-hows you know, that they can implement it at their place. And that's what we're about, about you know, supporting the British manufacturing. Doing it for real, because that, that, that's, that is my concern, I must admit, with this whole world, you know, changes, developments, is would it leave the small players behind? But everything you're saying, they won't be left no. behind. Um, well, you know, today we have the example of a very, very uh, inspiring machine vendor here who's been the leader in digital manufacturing for so many years, ASM. On the other side of the equation, we have soldering irons now with CFX built into them. So, you know, it can be a small company with a few manual tools. That doesn't prevent them from using CFX. In fact, it's even more important to capture data from those kinds of devices for the use for traceability, for example. So here we're talking about from the greatest to the most humble of manufacturing equipment providers are all getting a similar benefit and you know accessibility. So in answer to our question at the beginning, yes, there is there's incredible value here and it's not hard to share where there is a return on investment, isn't yeah. it? You know. Um, from the point of view of equipment manufacturers, is there a benefit in for the larger manufacturers that have a, a big footprint, they go into a lot of different parts of the industry, is it easier to create machinery that works this way or is it a case of any any um, business can get on this bandwagon? So we as ASM believe there is a benefit uh, for a manufacturer or equipment vendor like us because uh, even we suffer from the need or the force to provide all kind of different interfaces for the same data and it is for us a waste of R&D capacity and we also see that at our customers for them of course again it's a waste of R&D capacity dealing more with uh, transforming data transforming protocols and then mapping data from here to there and back and that is the big benefit that such a standard will bring us and even more I think it is an open standard and it will encourage small companies to follow their yeah maybe in the beginning small but very important ideas mm -hmm. and since there's an SDK available just free of charge just download it it will enable these small companies just to implement their ideas it's not something they have to write down and somehow try to submit and, and, and convince someone to do it, they can do it themselves. And I think this is one of the big benefits of such a standard that uh, everyone can participate and so the potential basis of contributors is much larger than uh, if it were only a, let's say a big company standard mm -hmm. which is enforced on a lot of other people. Yeah, I, I, I think that Tom and I are hoping that this is going to be the last interface that we ever have to develop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, well, congratulations on proving this, yeah. a live line that's working there, having a champion to prove that it, yeah. it can work and give industry an insight into yeah. it. So it's, uh, I think it's, a, it's a quite a successful day for everyone. Um, I think we should probably stop it there because we, we've got, we'll be going on to all the other no, topics we're going to be talking about later on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah, it's been yeah. a very interesting talk and um, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you.